I'm Nate, and this is Holy Land Travel HQ. Today, let's talk about the conflict in Gaza and the geography of Israel. So what I'm going to attempt to do here is lay out the geography with the borders, the terrain, and the roads uh, of modern-day Israel, and then show how it relates to ancient Israel at the time of Solomon and David, and even before that, and I'll show you the similarities in terms of battles and conquerors and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this from the point of view of an invading army, whether it's, you know, the guys coming out of Gaza, or if it's even in the past, uh, just in general, I'm going to be an invading army. And the reason why I'm going to do that is if I'm doing mission analysis for my own team, so let's say that I'm defending against any kind of invasion and I'm doing mission analysis, I want to figure out how the enemy is going to come into the area and try and take it over. Uh, what are my weaknesses? So what are the weaknesses that the enemy is going to try and take advantage of? And then the other thing that I'm going to try and evaluate my mission analysis is what is the enemy's you know, it factor? What is the one thing that they need uh, that if they don't have, then they're not going to succeed? In, in the military, we call that center of gravity. So there's one thing that I think that Hamas has that if they didn't have, they, they have no chance. Um, I still don't think they have very, a very good chance, which I'll get to here in a second. But let's go. Let's get into this right now. All right. So our main point of focus here is Gaza, which is right here. And then we have the Egyptian border. So southern Israel, we got Israel on top of that, and then Egypt on the bottom. And then to the east, we go up the river valley, the Jordan River Valley, uh, through the Dead Sea, up the Jordan River, to Galilee. We've got Golan, and then we'll get to the rest of the border when we hit the north. So obviously, this is Jordan over here. This is Egypt. Right here, and then you know we're looking at Israel in the middle. So let me get rid of this. All right, now let's let's take a look at the West Bank. So the West Bank is pretty easy to see. You don't even need to you know have a border, but you can tell where it is based on the fact that there's no vegetation. Uh, the Israelis have been planting forests and vegetation in the areas in order to rebuild the terrain and the landscape to be what it was, you know, back in, you know, the time of David and Solomon, where there was trees and, you know, healthy soil and stuff like that. So you can see these areas, like this is, this is the Sorek Valley. Um, they planted forest here, uh, probably like 50 or 60 years ago. You can see a distinct line down here and right here. Um, and then up here, uh, so obviously this border is not exactly perfect, but you can see areas where there's uh, distinct differences between one side and the other with the vegetation. So let's get rid of that stuff. So now let's go to the roads. So there's the coast road. You can see that, you know, here's a highway that goes down here. Uh, and then there's another highway that kind of goes out here down to Beersheba. And in ancient times, this highway along the coast was called the Coastal Highway. And this highway that went through what is called the Shvela or the Plains, uh, it's called the Intercoastal Highway. And then you had the Southern Highway, which went through Beersheba and over to Arad. I think that might be Arad right there. And then went over to Transjordan. I'll just kind of leave it right there. There's a couple of different ways you can get into Transjordan. And then there's the Patriarchal Ridge Route, which went through the center of the, uh, the wilderness from north to south. Today that aligns with Route 60. And then there was a, you know, a road that went through the, uh, the western side of the Jordan River Valley and another one that went through the eastern side. They, I don't think they were as big. The main pit stop along the western side was Jericho, uh, which I believe that's Jericho. Uh, and then there's a couple cities on the eastern side that you could stop at as well. Up in, in the north here, which we'll get to, one of the other main pit stop is uh, Beit Shemesh, or not Beit Shemesh, um, Beit Shan. And then you, you know, up to the north, we'll talk about Damascus and stuff like that. So you, you can see on the south here, there's really nothing that anybody did down here. 
people obviously went down there. And if you if you read Genesis and in the travels of Abraham, Abraham travels a lot between Beersheba and um, I forgot the name of the city out here. Uh, and he he travels a little, you know all around. He travels up to uh, Jabus, which is Jerusalem, and stuff like that. But nobody really travels down the, in in the Negev. Uh, the main train feature in the Negev is Mitzpah Ramon or Maktesh Ramon, which is also known as the Super Bowl or the Grand Canyon of Israel. Um, and then there's two more of these crater-like train features in the south. One's right here, and I believe the other one, it's either right here or right here. Um, I can't really see it that well. And these craters, they were created almost like, like when you when you bake cookies or a pie and the heat causes cracking in the, the surface of the cookie or the pie uh, and it breaks open a little bit. Uh, that's what, that's where, how these craters were created is that the, there's a significant amount of heat and the crust of the earth cracked open uh, and created these craters. These craters are, are very, very large. You're not gonna get through them. You have to go around them. So there's really no reason to come through here, I mean, you could do it if you wanted to, if you wanted the element of surprise, but you know, my guess is that the terrain features in Egypt are just as, as rough. And so there's really no point in doing that. If you wanna be quick and fast, you're gonna go around that. Let's clean this up a little bit and move to the west a little bit. So then you got this area right here, which you can go through. It's wide, it's open. If I remember right, I think it's alluvial soils or uh, mainly like loose soils. And so you might have a hard time going through with uh, wheeled vehicles and uh, foot troops. You know, back in, in the patriarchal time when you're dealing with animals and horses and donkeys, it, it was probably a little bit easier to get through there. But today, mainly you're probably going to get through with tracked vehicles. So you're not really going to want to go through there because you're going to get slowed down. And really what you want to do is get to these routes as soon as possible so you can move through them. The next thing is the terrain. And as we look at the terrain of, let me clean up the, uh, the roads here. If you look at the terrain, one of the major features that's talked about in the Bible is the hill country of Judea and also the hill country of Benjamin and Ephraim. And if you look at these areas, and we can even zoom in a little bit. So let's get rid of all this so I can zoom in. All right, there we go. So we, we notice that there's a lot of ridges, there's a lot of valleys, uh, not a lot of easy terrain that one can go through. And even if you, if you can get up to this ridge route, uh, you still got more terrain, you still got you know, the road is not an easy, easy go. Like from the south, it kind of starts off. I think it's going through here from the south. It, it kind of starts off easily. But as you get closer and closer to Jerusalem, it gets more and more difficult. And, and as you get into Jerusalem, you've got higher hills, deeper valleys, higher ridges, more ridges. I mean, it's like a spaghetti bowl of ridges and valleys. And so... Really, if you are trying to get into the heartland of Israel, the best thing for you to do is to come from the south or to come from the north. And if you look at the history of invading armies, almost all of them came from the north or they came up the coast and then they came in. So as we look at the patriarchal ridge route, there's think of it as a big spine and you've got roads that lead off of it right? Not many roads to the south here. There isn't many roads that, that lead off in the south, mostly in the north. That's why it kind of makes this a funnel on the south, uh, which, you know, you're going to start off easy. There's not a lot of places that you're going to either get into from the outside or lead off from if you, you, you know, have some problems. So you're kind of stuck. Let me erase all this and then zoom back out. Uh, in the in the biblical times, let's, let me set the borders up here again. In the biblical times, we had the five cities of the Philistines. So the Philistines are 
people who immigrated, supposedly immigrated, immigrated from Southern Europe. They're part of the Sea Peoples. There's a, many groups that were in the Sea Peoples. Some of them, the Phoenicians were one group. They immigrated and settled down in Northern Israel and Lebanon. Uh, the Philistines settled down in Southern Israel and they established five cities. Gaza, Ashkelon, Ashdod, Ekron, and Gath. And their main goal when they were fighting with the Israelites was to establish a barrier. So they, they wanted to establish a buffer zone around their five cities for protection. And so they felt that if they moved closer towards the hill country or if they could take the hill country, then they could have that buffer zone and feel comfortable. All right, for the Israelites, they didn't want, obviously, they didn't want that buffer zone to move in very close. And, you know, they had five cities. They had uh, Moresh, uh, Moresha, or Lachish, and then Moresha, Azekah, Beit Shemesh, and Gezer. And if you remember in Solomon's reign, he received Gezer from the Pharaoh of Egypt as a gift for marrying his daughter. And he had a building project to basically shore up some of these cities for defenses. I mean, if you go to Gezer or Lachish, you'll see six chambered gates. Uh, most of the gates in Israel are four chambered, but you see six chambers in uh, Gezer and Lachish. There's probably other places that have six chambers, but obviously that they were trying to build up a defense um, against the Philistines in this area. So historically speaking, this area, and you can even say today of Gaza, there's been plenty of battles and campaigns to push out the border in order to create a safe zone. So I actually find uh, this conflict to be interesting because it's very similar to what we see in the Bible in terms of them trying to push out. It's, it's, it's very tragic, but it's also very similar, which is why I'm not really too concerned that it's going to turn into World War III at this point, but it's, it's always a possibility. One thing to note before we go up to the north uh, that I just want to kind of show you here, and this is a modern day thing, but if we zoom in just to the south of Gaza Strip, obviously we got Gaza right here. We've got the border with Egypt right here. Uh, and one thing that you'll notice is that there, there's a lot of city up here. There's not a lot of city down here. And one of the things is that, uh, you know, you might ask the question, why are the Egyptians not helping out the Palestinians? Why are they not helping out the, the people in Gaza? And, you know, everything that I'm hearing is that uh, the Egyptians don't want Palestinians in their neighborhoods. And so, you know, as we look at this conflict, it's it, the heartbreaking thing is that a lot of the Arab states just don't seem to, in my mind, don't seem to really care about the Palestinians beyond what they can use them for in terms of getting at Israel. All right, let's zoom back out and let's go to the north uh, because the north is obviously where, if we're an invading army, this is where we want to come in at. So let's take a look at the north uh, because obviously the north is where we want to go for an invading army. Um, so let's set up our borders again. We've got uh, the border with Jordan going up through the Jordan River Valley. We've got the Golan Heights and then it comes back down and then it comes across uh, to the north. We've got, we've got Lebanon right there. I forgot where the exact line of demarcation is there. Um, we've got Syria, and then we've got Jordan. So when we look at uh, conquering armies, almost all the conquering armies come from Damascus and come into the Holy Land through Syria. Uh, some of them do come down the coast by Lebanon, mainly from Tyre, and come into here. But either way, you know, if they're coming in from Syria or if they're coming in from from Lebanon, they're if they're coming in from Lebanon uh, along the coast, they're going to hit the Carmel Mountain Range here, and they're going to come down, and they're going to get into the Jezreel Valley. And so I know that some of you listening to this, 
you're starting to hear a Jezreel Valley and you're saying, when is he going to say Megiddo? Uh, you see it on there and that's what we're going to talk about. So whether they're coming in from the coast or through Syria, you're going to end up in the Jezreel Valley. And the Jezreel Valley looks like a big arrowhead. There's been many battles that were fought in the Jezreel Valley, you know, for the last, you know, couple millennia, because this is basically where everything funnels into. If you're coming in through Syria, you're either going to come down here, and then you're going to come up the Jezreel Valley, and the re and I'll talk about that in a sec second why we're doing that, uh, or you're going to hit this mountain range and you're going to move into the Jezreel Valley, and the reason why you're going to move into the Jezreel Valley is because, again, like we talked about before, the road down to Jericho, it might not be the best road to take if you've got a conquering army because you don't have a lot of options left and you don't have a lot of resources out there in the desert like water and farmland for food that you can basically like take advantage of. The other problem with that is where are you going to set up your supply nodes? If you move into the Jezreel Valley and you conquer it, you can set up outposts, uh, you've got farm fields, um, you can for, you know, force labor the, uh, the locals into growing crops for you, you've got precipitation, you've got everything that you need to support an invading army, and you can set up a, a huge logistics node right there. And then you have to get through into the highlands or the central like wilderness or the, uh, the hill country of the Holy Land. So let's clean this up a little bit. All right, there we go. So if you are going to invade south into the hill country and try and take Jerusalem, uh, there's a couple ways that you can go. You can go through the Dotan Pass, which is somewhere around here, and hit that patriarchal ridge route and go through here, go all the way south and hit Jerusalem. But the problem with that is that the road, particularly between here and here is very narrow and it has mountains on both sides. So you have uh, Nablus is right here. And let me clean this up for you again. So you have Nablus right here. And it's at, a, at an intersection. So there's a, there's a road or ridge route that leads up to and connects with the patri patriarchal ridge route. And you've got Mount Ebal, Mount Gerizim, and Mount Mora right there. And it's a very steep valley. So if you're coming through here with an army, you're going to get into a huge battle right here at Nablus. Uh, it's, it's not going to be good for you. So you want to skip that and go around. So the, the next best place is to go through the Megiddo Pass. And there have been many battles throughout history that were fought at Megiddo to get through the, the Megiddo Pass. And there's even a couple Bible stories about commanders praying on which pass they, they should go through. And, you know, God tells them to go through the Megiddo Pass or the Yoknean Pass. And the other, other side's intelligence was wrong and they made it through. Um, but the reason why you want to go through the Megiddo Pass in particular is because it sets you out onto that intercoastal highway. And you can get down to the intercoastal highway and you can get to Tel Gezer or Gezer. Uh, but really what you're looking for is you're looking for a, a, a road that leads up to the patriarchal ridge route. In particular, what you're, you're trying to get to is what is known as the Central Benjamin Plateau. And the main city right now in current day that's there is Ramallah. In biblical times, the main cities were Ramah, where Samuel was. Shiloh is up there. When the Israelites crossed the Jordan and took over Jericho, the way that they went up and into the region is they went up through, I think it's the Taibe Ridge route, and cities that you'll recognize in that campaign are Ai, Bethel, Shiloh, that they moved into there. The Central Benjamin Plateau is one of those areas where you can actually, you can dominate the Patriarchal Ridge route, and you've also got a huge open area where you can set up your logistics base. So if you're a conquering army, you can set up your secondary or your, your closest to the line logistics base in the Central Benjamin Plateau and then have your main campaign base uh, and supply depot in the Jezreel Valley. And so you would set up your first line of communication this way. The best way to come up there, you're going to skip Nablus 
and this area right here is a pretty good, not necessarily flat, but it's got a minimal amount of these valleys and ridges uh, for you to get through, so you can get up through there. I believe there's also another route. Uh, I think it's the lower and upper Bay Huron uh, Ridge route up to the Central Benjamin Plateau, and then you've got from the east side, you've got this uh, Taipei Ridge route. And so if I was a conquering army, what I would do is, let me change my colors here, is uh, I would conquer Beichan and then protect the opening, the Jezreel Valley here. Uh, I would set up my logistics hub at Megiddo and the entrance into the Megiddo Pass. I would set up a fortification at the northern end of the Patriarchal Ridge Route. I would not enter into this area between um, basically another side of Nablus. I would come down, I would enter up through here, uh, set up a point here, a defensive point here, and then I would move into Central Benjamin Plateau and I would I would basically have a campaign to take that the plateau and and subdue any of the the villages or outposts that are enemy outposts that are there. And then basically what I would do is I would just cut off Nablus and uh, starve it. And then once it's starved, I would come in from the north, take it, and then you've got a secondary line of communication that's set up right there. You've got your primary line of communication through here, and then you can move into Jerusalem from the north. Let me erase and clean this up a little bit, and we'll go into Jerusalem, and I'll tell you why we want to come in from the north. Zoom in on the old city. So the old city, so we've got the Kidron Valley right here. We've got the Hinnom Valley right here. We've got, I think this is this is the, actually the Kidron Valley and it kind of leads out here. So we have natural terrain. You know, the Mount of Olives is over here. Uh, we have natural terrain that, that makes it difficult for any kind of campaign or assault on the city from three sides, from the east, on this side, from the south, and from the west. So really the only way you're gonna take Jerusalem is from the north. And you kind of see this in how the city developed. Um, you know, originally the city of David was down here, and then it expanded, expanded to the Temple Mount, and then expanded west, and then ex expanded to the north, and then it, it expanded again to the north, and it's kind of kept expanding to the north. When you look at, I'm gonna clean this up and move out again. When you look at going to the north, getting to the Central Benjamin Plateau is almost a straight shot from the old city. There's really not a whole lot of difficult terrain to get over, as you can see here. So, so we're looking at this roadway from right here, and this is getting into the Central Benjamin Pla Plateau. So again, just to reiterate, some vulnerabilities in the north are, you know, the Golan Heights area. You've got Mount Hermon right here, which is going to funnel people. And you've got this kind of valley right here. It's also going to funnel and, you know, along the coast down into uh, the Jezreel Valley. So you've got natural funnels that come into the area. Your main one is gonna come from Damascus uh, or along the coast. Up here, obviously we have Hezbollah uh, in modern times that is waiting to cross the border, but they don't have, I don't think they have the, the military might to be able to really do anything. They're just a terrorist group. Finally, let's talk about the center of gravity for both Israel and Hamas. Remember that the center of gravity is that one thing that a military or a force needs in order to succeed. Without it, they can't win a war. For Israel, their center of gravity is support from the United States and the West at large. The United States is the buffer that can keep the other Arab states at bay, but there are many in the West who do not support Israel. This means that Israel must walk a fine line. Almost all Western militaries follow the Geneva Convention and have their own versions of what the US military calls rules of engagement. Israel calls their version purity of arms. For Hamas and the Gaza Strip, their center of gravity is social media. They need to win the PR war. This is because they need the other Arab states that surround them to join them, otherwise their war will be short-lived. 
at face value if this war was fought without any international parties watching, without any biased media attention, or without social media, Israel would definitely win this war. But this isn't the case. Thanks for watching, and if you like the content in today's video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to keep me in your feed.